take the enthusiasm away, but he wants to get the guys back down to, just back down to earth where they can play football. Tech leads the series, and they've lost here to TCU only once since 1963. That was 17 years ago. Great conditions, as we said. And as always here in Lubbock, the wind should come into play. And Kevin Kortzman has us underway. This is going to be Dudley McAfee who decides not to field it. It is a touchback. And you notice right off, I'm sure the red jerseys and the black oh, pants. Boy. This being the home finale this regular season, they have decided to change up their color scheme a bit. Well, it was interesting. They came out and warmed up with the black jerseys. I was just as surprised as you were to see them. And Jamie Gill, again a quarterback, near perfect to Texas last week, including the game-winning touchdown to Anthony Mannyweather. With him in the backfield, as we mentioned, James Gray, and he's just 32 yards to get his second 1,000-yard season. Winston, the full back and you saw the receivers the offensive line led by Odiorn and Richburg on that left side they break the eye formation on first down Bill almost stumbling on play action has a day and a half and the wide side of the field is open but he's chased down and picks up only about three yards as Daryl Davis ultra quick defensive end a senior from Midland, right there, 6'3", 257 pounds, makes the tackle. With him up front, Washington, Wyatt, and Collins. The linebackers in their 4-3, Booker, Smith, and Cobble. And in the secondary, Galavis, McWright, Crump, and Campbell. So from the 23-yard line, the Raiders second down and seven yards to go. They have both their wideouts on the left side. They would prefer to run the ball the vast majority of the times today. And Gray powering up near the 29-yard line. That'll be close, but not quite for the first down. Galladies brought him down. Good block by Richburg. As you look at Gray's numbers this year. Texas Tech must for this afternoon. What are they? Well, first of all, avoid another letdown. They seem to have that big game, and then all of a sudden have that letdown. Capitalize on the turnovers. They should create the turnovers and be able to capitalize on them. TCU has been very guilty of that, and have James Gray gain over 100 yards. That has really been a statistic that we'll look at when he gains over 100 yards rushing. They rarely lose when that happens. Third call at two. They try Gray second effort he has the first down up to the 36 yard line a fine block by Travis Price to get him around that corner and Lavoyle Crump made the tackle on the senior from Fort Worth you know emotions play such a big part in it I don't doubt that the red jerseys was were saved until the last minute and I'm sure that's part of Spike Dykes is just trying to get him, get his team motivated. Look what James Gray has done against TCU. That is unbelievable. 6.3 yards per carry. That's his three prior seasons. However, TCU has had an outstanding running defense this year. They've shut down some big backs. On first down, a floater well behind the tight end Kevin Sprinkles. And it was a near interception for Ed Galladies. Not a well-thrown ball under the wind by Jamie Gill. And that's an important point to bring up about uh, about your TCU defense here, Dave, is that they have played the run very, very well. We saw what they did against Air Force, and Air Force came into this into their game with TCU, and they were highly ranked as far as running the ball. They were top ranked. Yeah. And only because of what the Frogs did, they held them to about 230 yards, are they now behind Nebraska. Manny Weather in motion on second down. Will play action. This time the pressure is there. And at the 27-yard line, he has coughed it up. And a TCU recovery. Wow, does that play a big part? You do not want to give a team like TCU, when you're supposed to be the favorite, and you can see Jim Wacker there, you don't want to give him the ball in this, this field position. But Gill just gets a little sloppy here. The ball gets pulled away from him. He falls backwards, and they just cannot cover back over top of it. Good charge there by TCU. Well controlled. Fred Washington stripped the ball, and Daryl Davis made the recovery. So a turnover-prone TCU sees how the other half lives. Giles under pressure from Rowe and throws to his offensive lineman as the flag goes down for grounding. Jody Morse, number 52, the center, was the nearest horn frog to that toss. Yeah, that def that's definitely going to be, uh, that's, a, that's a critical play right there. You just can't make a mistake like that. Giles under pressure just wanted to get the ball down. What you ought to do is just throw the ball down 15, 18 yards downfield. As they march it back on 
the intentional grounding call. Intentional grounding. Offense, five-yard penalty. Lost the down. Boy. Offensively for TCU in the triple shoe. Giles, Jackson, Palmer, Holmes, and Foray late starting additions at wideouts. Elliott, Sullivan, Morse, Bronson, and Alexander, they have really scrambled an injury-plagued offensive line today. Giles, after play action, has the open man in the middle. And the catch made by Alan Foray, a senior from Midland. He's brought down by Ronald Ferguson. And that will help the TCU cause after the penalty markoff. Defensively for Tech, Washington, Perry, Hennington, and Mathis Meyer, as has been the case all year, the front four for them. The linebackers, Weatherspoon and Derry Berry, who starts for Wingo. Matt Wingo with the turf toe problem. Ferguson, Walker, Dubisky, and Saul, a secondary, seeming to come into their own as the season wears on. Third down and eight for Ron Giles and the Frogs, and it is Tommy Palmer dragged down by Charles Perry. Boy, who else would you think on that front line except Charles Perry? He has just had a marvelous season. Number 74, 65 tackles. He's been in on the stacks. He's had tons of pressures, and he plays his position really well. Controls his guard, plays off him, tackles for a loss. So Kevin Forgeman will go for a school record. If he makes it, that's eight straight field goals. His last miss was in the opener at Missouri from 52. This is a 41-yarder. He has the win behind him. And he's got plenty of leg, but he is wide right. Well, that's fair up your defense. When you stop them, you give them the ball, your offense turns it over, your defense comes over, and look at the defense coordinator. Just saying, that's the way to go, guys. They go first and 10 from their own 24-yard line. We are just underway at Lubbock. Glad you could join us today. The Raycom Southwest Conference Game of the Week. The pitch is to Gray, and he may be gone. One man with an angle, and Robert McWright. Saves a touchdown at the seventh. And that put him over a thousand yards. 69 yards for James Gray. And he almost fumbled this. Watch the pitch. It was way low. See, we had to scoop it down by his knees. He barely got up. Great block right there. Kick out. See the guard kick out right there? Gray plays off that block, and it's off to the races here. He gets run down on the angle, but what a run for James Gray. He's now over 1,000 yards. We saw his previous best run of the year, 53 yards, about the same point of the game in, in uh, Lubbock against New Mexico. Second time he has gone over the 1,000-yard mark and quick movement on the left side by Charles Odeorn for Texas Tech. Well, he joins an elite group here at, uh, at Texas Tech. Only James had not. I think had not did it twice, if I'm not Illegal mistaken. Procedure. Offense. Bud Alexander, our referee, had not twice, Doug McCutcheon once, and now Gray twice. And, of course, that's that's quite a plateau. So that is out of the way, and now he's, he's still got some milestones to chase as he goes up the Southwest Conference career rushing and touchdown ladders. And the Raiders, after the five-yard markoff, two tight ends, Bart Talkington has checked in. Along with Sprinkles, and now in motion goes Lewis Sheffield. Anthony Lynn giving Gray a quick breather. Brought down just inside the 15 by Roosevelt Collins. You know, sometimes you overlook great effort, but there was also a great effort on TCU because they had a defensive back who ran Gray down. Now, if they don't, you think automatically they're going to go in and score. But this TC unit has been a tough unit versus the run. For somebody to give that kind of effort on a, on a run like that, sometimes you just turn and look at him, watch him go. But that defensive back, and I, I didn't see who it was, ran him down, and it may be a saving tackle. Robert McWright had the late burst of speed. Second down, 15, no gain on first down. So Gray back in for Lynn, and he also is stopped at the 15. And this is why TCU had a fair amount of confidence coming into this game. They have held down the greats. Last week, Chuck Weatherspoon of Houston only 34 yards on 15 carries. And then a few weeks ago, D. Dallas only 28 yards. That's amazing. And their defense, their defense has been a kind of a who's who. It's who's who not hurt. They play. Manny Weather and Price wide right. Sheffield in motion on third and 15. They keep it on the ground to Gray on the short side of the field. And a pickup of maybe three before Collins knocks him out of bounds. 
And a field goal situation after the 69-yarder by Gray set him up in great shape, first and goal at the seven. And you kind of go back to that great play by McWright to run him down. He was the only person who had a shot at him when Gray broke through, and he ran him to the sideline and played well. Of course, McWright with that great speed, 4.5 and a 40-yard dash, he can run down a lot of guys. Jamie Simmons will hold for Lynn Elliott, who has not had a good year, only 5 of 12, but he has hit some long ones. This one from 29 yards, angle to the right, and he's good. So TCU comes up empty after the fumble recovery. James Gray sets up the first score of the day for the Red Raiders. Back deep for the Frogs, Charles Britton and Kevin Fry. And from the goal line, it is Corey Ford, late addition to their specialty team, and he is out across the 15-yard line. TCU must today. Well, first of all, eliminate turnovers. They have had a horrible time. 15 fumbles, 22 interceptions. Pressure Jamie Gill. Jamie Gill can sit back there. They had 22 sacks. TCU had 22 sacks in the first six games. They've had three in the last one sack in the last three games. And the third one is most important. Play effectively for 60 minutes. In the second half, Tech has had a tremendous fourth quarter. And TCU has just, they've just kind of almost like they've wielded in the fourth quarter. They haven't wielded. They've just had so many players just go down and have injuries that they just don't play well in the second half. Tommy Palmer, the cutback, gets a maybe two before Tom Mathismeyer, the right defensive end, makes the stop. Palmer, great story, off triple ligament surgery in his very first game at TCU at Boston College. He's also had a broken foot. He has fought back from all those injuries. Notre Dame, 26-6, but SMU scored on a Mike Romo touchdown pass. That made it 24-6, and then it got strained. Well, then, then uh, they blocked the extra point and ran it back for two points. Interesting, that's only the second time that I know of that it happened, and both of them with Notre Dame involved. It was Rice-Notre Dame yeah. last year. Rice did it. Palmer again, off left tackle. And he powers his way out, maybe across the 25 for a gain of five yards. And again, Mathis Meyer was there for the contact. You talked about how TCU has been kind of a fade team in the second half. One problem has been injuries, as you mentioned. The other problem is extreme youth. About half their team is freshman and redshirt freshman. Youngest oh, team yeah. except for SMU. Duke surprising North Carolina State by that margin in the second quarter. And Florida and Georgia are scoreless also in the second. Third down and three for the Frogs with Michael Jackson in motion. Palmer for the third straight time has the speed to get the corner turned and should have the first down or at least be very close. Boy, I thought he made a critical mistake there when he dipped back out to try to get in. When you, What you have got to do in this situation is you've got to know how far you have got to get for first down. And when he makes that second little dip outside, he may have dipped back. Now watch right here. Put your head down and get it. Now watch, he dips right here, back out again, and he got run out of bounds. I'm not sure he's going to make it. That cost him the first. You're yeah. exactly right. Yeah, you have got to know what you've got to get. And you've got to put your head down and get that first down. So Rex Roberts... Former star on the soccer team at TCU. He punted one time before this year, and that was as a seventh grader. That was the sum total of his football career. This one is end over end, and Tracy Saul bobbles it. May have managed to fall on it back near the 30-yard line, and another big sigh of relief for the Red Raiders. They hang on to it. This may work in reverse because, remember, uh, isn't it uh, at TCU where they had all the crickets all over the field? And TCU may think that they're at home, so you better be careful of these little clickers. <laughs> Crowd expected to be around 40,000 today, so not everybody got a clicker. Anthony Lynn. Around right end and across the 35-yard line, a pickup of about three. And with Gray's big 69-yard burst, Lynn has already seen some early duty. He's the heir apparent as soon as Gray graduates, he'll inherit that eyeback position. And he's just a sophomore, and that's a nice average, four and a half yards. Of course, that's all reflective of that great offensive line that they have, that senior line that they, they play behind here at Tech. All seniors and very deep, and more than a few times during the course of the game, they'll put in their second team offensive line, let them go for a while. Clifton Winston with his first carry of the day. He, like Gray, a senior. Last home game for him. He's out of Houston Smiley. And 
a very active Roosevelt Collins with another stop for TCU. And Collins plays this position well. Look at that. Sheds this block, closes down inside, makes the tackle. Doesn't get it, doesn't wrap him up. But when you get, you have to control that end. You have to shed that block. And he did that very well on that play. And you close from inside, from outside, in from that end position. On third and five, three wideouts. And no tight end as the Clickers come up in unison. And Jamie Gill again will be sacked back at the 32-yard line. The second sack for the Frogs. And Richard Booker came on a blitz from the strong linebacker position. And that evidently was going to be a quick pass, and it didn't open for him because Gill only set about four yards off the line of scrimmage. When he set back there, he set short, looked up, and then could not make the readjustment. So evidently it was a fast pass that just was covered, and he couldn't get it off. So Jamie Simmons will punt it away. And the return on for TCU. This is a marvelous kick, and Mike Houston takes it back at his 15. And Dave, he did a good job to squeeze four yards out of that return. Yes, he did. That was that had great hang time. That's exactly what you want. They not only time the distance that a punt goes, the length that it goes, you hang that, you hang that, you time, excuse me, the hang time, how long it hangs in the air. And the minute he caught that ball, there were red shirts right around him. That was a great punt. So the Horn Frogs trailing 3-0, first and 10 at their 19-yard line. And as usual, three wide receivers. The hang time on that, four and a half seconds. Wow. And then the toss is to Curtis Modkins. Maybe a two-yard pickup. Charles Perry, the defensive tackle, senior from Iowa Park on the tackle. And Modkins, somewhat uh, like Anthony Lynn, a guy who is really going to figure more in the future for CCU. He is a true freshman from Marlin in Central Texas. Right, and he's the kind of back that just kind of just slashes through holes. He's not that back that quickly sees the hole, makes the cut, and accelerates. He just slashes through there, and they really like his running style. Giles with the give to Modkins. And he is blasted once he got near the 25 after a pickup of three. Ryan Gerlich and Sammy Walker, number 25 right there, the sophomore from McKinney. And Walker coming off maybe his best game ever as a Red Raider. He had nine tackles and two huge interceptions in Austin. You talked about huge ones. I was watching the outside linebacker at that time close that trap. Boy, I'll tell you, that, that's a play that just takes courage. You turn around there and you got those big guards pulling out. You have got to close that thing. You give it everything you've got. On third and five, straight drop. Giles under throwing Michael Jackson in double coverage. So he made the decision and it looked like he never looked off of Jackson. That's exactly what he did. He was going to try to run Jackson on a little flip pattern where he runs down about five yards and cuts straight across the field. Now watch the head of Giles. See him looking right out here. Now see the little slip right there? He never takes his eyes off. He threw in the double coverage right there. They had him just wiped out. He had two wide, uh, two wide receivers going downfield, but he was concentrating strictly on him. Lucky that was an interception number 17. This not a good punt by Roberts and fair caught by Brian Dubisky at the 45-yard line in the first real good field position of the day for Texas Tech to start a drive. 31 yards is it on the Rex Roberts punt. Well, we talked about Gray going up the ladder. He's already passed Ben Cowens of Arkansas and very much within reach today of Walter Abercrombie, who was number seven, and then later on, he's got two more games to try and catch Curtis Dickey. Well, you can see there those, well, all those ones that are ahead of them have all played and done exceptionally well. Abercrombie, is, I saw Dickey in there. They've all played in the NFL and done extremely well. And that's the caliber running back that he is. Winston, the man in motion, and Gill looking on play action to a wide open Travis Price and out of the tackle and out of bounds at the 26. Dave, I said yesterday, I said yesterday to Spike, I said, how fast is Travis Price? He said, oh, probably about five seconds in the 40-yard dash. I said, oh, come on. He said, and he asked one of the players, and the player said four or five, and I thought Spike was going to die. He said, you think he's that fast? He shows how he, he has that great speed. He has excellent hands, and gosh, he never made a bigger catch than he did in that A&M game. Two of them, two late touchdowns yeah. in their comeback. Reggie Campbell was the man who drove him out of bounds. 
Second big play of the day already for the Raiders. Gray looking for a block. Rolls down near the 20. And a nice six-yard pickup on first down. The block set by Charles Odeorn and the tackle by Buddy Wyatt, the right defensive tackle. And if you're a Red Raider fan, this is exactly what you want to do. You want to take, and you have got to capitalize when you get good field position. TCU, conversely, did not capitalize when they got that one great field position. And it's a game of field position. The game is played. It just, you just, it takes a long time to regain that field position if you don't capitalize on it. The big surprise that Forsman missed that field goal after he hit seven straight. Winston darting through the hole now outside, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Robert McWright made his second saving tackle. Winston goes for 13. And they talk about fast feet. You want to see fast feet? This is what fast feet are. It's coming right at you. Now watch his feet when he skips into the hole there and then jumps out. Now watch right here. Boom, plant and get back out. You see the move by Robert McWright? Just plant and turn right around to get back outside. But a nice move by Clifton Winston, one of the seniors, of course, in this game today. Red Raiders now first and goal, seven-yard line. This is where they started first and goal on that other drive, and then the penalty knocked them back. Sheffield went in motion, pitch to Gray. Again, the short side of the field, inside the five. And Robert McWright, again, was there to knock him out of bounds, the senior from Dallas Roosevelt. You know, interesting about McWright is we if we brought his name up several times on key plays. He's one of those defensive backs. He, he doesn't look big. 190 pounds, you know, you think, well, he's not that big. But he bench presses over 400 pounds. Kids want to know how to play in the Southwest Conference. You've got to be strong. One thing that says a lot about his activity, he's the third leading tackler from right cornerback where yeah. you shouldn't get that much action. Absolutely. They're blitzing. On second and four, nailed it. Maybe for a loss of one, Sheffield. And the first man to greet him was Fred Washington. Boy, you could tell that when they came up to the line. When you've got 11 purple helmets up on the line of scrimmage, you say, I think they're coming at us. And that time they guessed right. They stopped that play up the middle. Big third down here. You don't want to settle for another field goal because that makes two drives where one touchdown can take the lead. You've almost got to come away with seven points in this situation. Raiders with two wideouts this time. And no full house in the backfield. Manny Weather went in motion. Gill going for him. Has him. Touchdown. It wasn't 65 yards like last week in Austin, but they'll take it. Well, if I remember right, Manny Weather is one of those walk-ons that we talked about, that we have talked about, and the crowd here loves it. On a little slant pattern right at the post, he just makes that quick break and brings that ball in. Good concentration because, I'll tell you, that's a tough pass when that Gill gets back there and just rifles it at you. Elliott is this only one extra point, 21 of 22, and keeps that trend alive. There's Anthony Mannyweather. Now watch this, right across the middle. Boom, now that's a tough pass. And you see, right there, there he comes down with it. That's the seven points, and they lead now 10 to nothing, Texas Tech. And they've walked on and made this team. And look at the impact of some of those players. I think of Mathis Meyer and Weatherspoon, and of course, Mannyweather. No way they'd be six and two without that group. Corey Ford had his knees down at the eight yard line. And some specialty team problems for TCU here in the early going. A true freshman from Tyler here having a hard time bringing this one in. Well, the, the play here is that he's down and touches the ball. You see right there, that's a perfect freeze of exactly what, that's what the call is. He was down and touched the ball. Of course, in the NFL, you can get up and run, but not on that one. Well, the poor punt set up only a 55-yard touchdown drive for the Raiders. Third touchdown catch of the year by Manny Weather. And for Gill, it was touchdown pass number nine. And TCU again with the fumble fingers back at the five-yard line for Ron Giles. In the Baylor game a couple of weeks ago, they had many chances, uh, but caused their own problems, among other things, by not getting clean exchanges from center to quarterback. And most times, and that's surprising because Giles has gotten most of the work here this season. But what it is caused by is the quarterback pulling out too quickly out of center. We see it all the time. You see it a lot of times when they bring in a new quarterback. But that's an error that you just cannot make, especially on your own.
own eight yard line because there's a good chance she'll give it back up. In his defense, he's still playing with a strained right throwing wrist. Great protection, and over the middle, the completion for a first down to Michael Jackson. Brought down by Charles Rowe. Jackson, the leading receiver as just a freshman redshirt with his 33rd catch of the year. And you said much to his credit, and this is to his credit. This is a well-thrown ball. Look at the coverage right there. The coverage is right in front. You can see the ball is just, that's as well as you can throw it. And that's what Giles has done all season. He's had flashes and moments and games of brilliance. And then all of a sudden, they fumble the ball, and he throws interceptions. But that was a great play. Biggest play so far for them, Motkins. Well off tackle near the 38-yard line, and Mike Derryberry with the stop. Derryberry starting today after being supplanted earlier in the year by Wingo. Now at halftime, Notre Dame a favorite by anywhere between 50 and 60 points. Name your spread. Duke by now 18 in the second quarter and still scoreless in one of the great rivalries in college football, Virginia with the early lead over Virginia Tech on our Dr. Pepper roundup. Modkins got three, second and seven. And Giles again has good protection, has the wide open Allen Foray, and another frog first down. And oh boy, that'll help any kind of a sore wrist. We had talked with Jim Wacker about the sore wrist that Giles had, and that'll help any sore wrist. And that's what Jim Wacker and his crew want to see. They want to see a confident Ron Giles standing back in the pocket, not worrying about the pressure, taking time and finding him. And look how, look how much calmer Jim Wacker seems. Yeah, for him, that's almost homeless. <laughs> Giles with a roll. Again, Jackson. Nice spin move out of the tackle. And down to the 32 and should have another TCU first down. Tracy Saul from free safety made the stop. Boy, Michael Jackson, he's one of those many freshmen that they have on this team. Just swings out of the backfield. Now, Giles makes a better decision here. Finds Jackson. Now, watch Jackson when he gets the ball. Good head down. Comes back around. Picks up some extra yardage. Interesting, when he played at Corpus Christi, he had 1,300 yards rushing, 1,000 yards catching. And I think that was just his senior year, if I'm not mistaken. They looked at those numbers, and they said, this is the prototype for this triple shoot offense we want to install. And Curtis Modkins... Another big chunk, 11 yards before he's out of bounds at the 22. What is TCU doing differently from their first two possessions? Well, they've got a much calmer a quarterback in there. Giles is taking control of this team now. Uh, when he sets back up and he gets that little bounce about him and he stands in that pocket and he's calm, he's a much different quarterback. He doesn't hurry, he doesn't force the ball, he's not worrying about pressure. And this is a, an excellent draw, drive for TCU. They're doing the things they need to do to do them well. First down, 10. This time the draw play for Monkins. Maybe two as he reaches up near the 20-yard line. When that big old veteran defensive line of Texas Tech also, well, I think of Mathis, Meyer, Hennington in there, and Perry and Washington, they're a solid unit. You know, we talked about all the injuries as we watched the quarter tick down. Texas Tech, I think, I don't, I can't remember a player that they've lost. Who have they lost back there? Well, Robbie Blackshear. That's really right, Blackshear. The only one. He, he had knee surgery. And that is all. And right. in, a, in a Cinderella year like this, almost any team that does this much better than predicted has health, among other things, to think. Absolutely. Maybe the last play of the first quarter. Giles not able to escape from Marcus Washington. There's a flash, and look at Jim Wacker walk away. He's got to be scratching his head on that one because in that situation, when your pocket is crumbling down and you've got the ball on, what, the 18, 19-yard line, you throw the ball away. You get rid of it. You don't eat it for a 15-yard loss. And Washington came away with his third sack of the year. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom's Kibro. We 